Hello and um, welcome to this second limiting reagents film. It's the eighth of eight films about calculations, which sounds like great news. It sounds like this is the last kind of calculation you're ever going to have to do. Um, that's true if you're about to do a semester one exam in year 11 uh, on the 2A material, um, but it's certainly not true uh, if you're later on in year 11 or if you're in year 12. There's actually more different kinds of calculations to do, but uh, that's it for now if you're in year 11 semester one, so that's good news for some people. Okay, in this film um, we're going to do a practice problem of the kind that we saw um, in the previous film and we're going to use the fact that we know that all the limiting reagent reacts in a reaction to try and predict how much material is left over after a reaction has happened. Okay, or in other words the amount of excess. So here we go, here is our practice problem. Okay. One question people often ask is, how do I know a question is a limiting reagent question if it doesn't say anything about limiting reagent? Well, a good way to uh, think of that is to say to yourself, well, if I'm given two, uh, if I'm given information about two of the reactants, so here I'm given information about tin and the iodine, then there's a very good chance it's a limiting reagent question. Okay, sometimes it will just say what's the limiting reagent, but if it doesn't, this is how to spot. Okay. It's a stoichiometry problem, so I'm going to think about the fact that I've got a 1 to 2 mole ratio here, and I'm being asked about the maximum amount of tin iodide, so I'm going to think about the mole ratio of that as well. So I've got 1, 2, 1. Okay, um, assuming we understood the last film pretty well, um, I'm going to go through this quite quickly. Uh, if you get a little bit stuck here, it's probably worth looking at that previous film again or checking your notes from it. Okay, um, but here we go. The first step, as we know, is to find the number of moles of both the substances. Okay, so let's do that for the tin, and let's do that for the iodine. Okay, and that is going to be 10 over 118.7. Okay, and that is going to be 40 over 2 times 126.9. And if I remember rightly, um, those two numbers are 0.0. 842 and um, don't remember that one 0.158 okay to three significant figures now if you're going to be doing it the mental arithmetic way you still got to show some working to the examiner so let's see what's going on here the ratio is one to two so for every one mole of tin I need two iodines so if I've got this much tin this needs how much iodine to react with it, or well, twice that amount, so 2 times 0 0.0842, and that equals uh, around about 0.168. Okay, but we've only got 0.158, so that's less than 0.168. So therefore, the iodine is the limiting reagent. Okay. If we're doing it the ratios method, remember we saw that one in the last film. Okay, let's see what we've got in reality. We've got 0 0.0842 moles of tin and 0.158 of iodine. Okay, this is actually exactly the same maths as you're doing in your head, but it's a different way of setting it out. Okay, this equals, what did it equal? Oh. Where have I put it? Oh yeah, there, 0.53. Um, and the ratio from the equation, which I've got the tin on top and the iodine on the bottom, is 1 over 2, and that is obviously equal to 0.5. Remember, I could do this the other way round. It doesn't matter which way round I do it, but I've just got to stick to the same way in both of them. Okay, I'm only going to do it one way, just to keep the film a bit short. Okay, this number here, is bigger than that one there, okay? So this number here on top must be bigger than it needs to be, okay? So that tells us that this is the excess and that this is the limiting reagent. So and that is iodine, okay? So no matter which way we do it, we get the same answer, which is good news, okay? Now what we're gonna have to do is find the maximum amount of tin iodide, right? This is usually going to be a mass, but if they want something else, they'll tell you. Okay, so we're going to find the mass of tin iodide. Okay, 
and that equals the number of moles times the molar mass. The molar mass of tin iodide is equal to 118.7 plus 4 times 126.9, and that equals 626.3. Okay, so if I can find the number of moles of it, I've got the molar mass, right, and I'll be able to find its mass. Well, let's just switch colours again because it's nice and colourful. Um, the number of moles of tin iodide, we're going to have to relate that to our limiting reagent. It doesn't matter about the excess because there's more than enough of it. There's going to be some left over. Okay? So the number of moles of tin iodide is going to be related to our number of moles of iodine. Is that true the way I've written it? Well, no, because the number of moles of tin iodide is 1, whereas the number of moles of iodine is 2. So the number of moles of tin iodide is actually half the number of moles of iodine. Okay, that's what this statement says. All right, and that equals a half times 0.158, which equals 0.079. Okay, so therefore the mass just changed. Oops, what was happening there? Oh, odd. Um, the mass of tin iodide. That is equal to 0 0.079 multiplied by 626.3, and that equals 49.5 grams. Okay, so that's how we found the amount of product based on a limiting reagent. Now, the next part of the problem, as I said, is to find out how much excess material there is left over. Okay, I'm actually going to need these two numbers here. Uh, in the next part of the calculation, all right, but I've actually got to rub all this out, sadly, so here we go, here's the next stage. Just to remind ourselves, we had 0 0.0842 moles of that, and 0 0.158, was it? 0.158 moles of that, and we decided that this was the limiting reagent, okay? So as well as our, we've just calculated what remains in the reaction container, we've calculated how much product there was, that was 49.5 grams of tin iodide. There's also going to be some of this left over. How much is going to be left over? Well, the number of moles of tin that reacts is equal to half the number of moles of iodine, which equals half of that, which is 0 0.079 moles, as we saw before. So that means this is the number of moles of tin that reacts. That means the number of moles of tin that remains is going to be the number that you started with, 0 0.0842, minus the amount that reacts. And that equals uh, 0.0052 moles. Okay, and if we're just going to be consistent and stick with masses, then we can find the mass of tin, and we can say that that is the number of moles times its molar mass, which equals 0 0.0052 multiplied by its molar mass 118.7. What's that? 0 0.0052. And that's 0.62 grams of tin. So in the container, by the time the reaction has finished, we've actually got the product. We've got some leftover tin, because that was our excess reagent. And we've got no iodine left, because that all got used up, because it was the limiting reagent. Well, that's about it for limiting reagent questions. Um, and they're very much like every other calculation in the sense that if you practice them, they become quite easy. Um, but if you just do them once and then forget about them until the test, um, often don't get all the marks in the test. Um, main thing is with them, get a bit of practice. Make sure you understand your notes so that you can revise them well. And if you're still having a bit of difficulty, 
then please, please come and get some help with them.